Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. This is Winning Cures Everything. I am one of your hosts, Gary Seegers. Uh, this is the interview of the week, and we'll have a better name for that eventually, I'm sure. But as of right now, that is what we're rolling with. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us, all of our picks, previews, videos, podcasts, social media networks, platforms, whatever. Uh, you can find everything, along with the Pick'em Contest, et cetera, over at winningcureseverything.com. You can follow us on Twitter, at Winning Cures. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. Uh, leave some comments. Tell us what you like about the interviews, what questions you would ask, because we're going to have our guests on again uh, this week. Of course, Chris Felica from ESPN's College Game Day and the Stanford Steve and the Bear podcast. You can read his stuff on the chalk over at ESPN.com. Uh, that's part of ESPN Plus, ESPN Insider, whatever it is now. Um, but yeah, Felica is always generous with us. He comes on with us every year, at least a couple of times. Uh, this year, of course, we've got some crazy stuff going on in college football. We're talking about a whole bunch of different stuff. So uh, without further ado, here is the man himself. Here is the bear, Chris Felica. <laughs> On today's show, we've got Chris Felica, the Bear, from ESPN's College Game Day and the Stanford Steve and the Bear podcast. You can find him on Twitter, at Chris Felica. Uh, buddy, how you doing? Everything going okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. We're getting set for the uh, the, 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 the most intriguing and uh, most focused upon time of the year. Uh, playoff rankings will be out in a couple of weeks, and I'm sure a lot more conversation and debate will be uh, garnered in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, we're, we're doing good. Well, that's uh, that's wonderful. Looks like you had a fantastic time uh, in Happy Valley last week. Now, obviously, college football atmospheres. There's a ton of good ones across college football. That's a whiteout at Happy Valley with stakes that high. That's got to be what, like top three, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the scene for the game is it, it, pretty incredible. They, they they get into it and, and they get after it. And, and it, it's one of those things that in in person it looks awesome and, and tv does a great job of uh capturing it as well but yeah that, that, that's a great spot i mean clemson clemson's atmosphere is a uh is a great spot as well lsu at night is a great spot so i mean i have to just off the top of my head those would probably be the uh the top three that i would that i would look towards all right so those are those are bucket lists that we have got to take care of because at Look, Chris and I have not done anything like that. We went to Chicago. I was texting you about this. We went to Chicago last week for Ohio State Northwestern. And I was really surprised at how just awesome the atmosphere around Northwestern was, even for a, a not great football team this season. Like, they really yeah, no, we're, Yeah, when we, when we went there for, for, for game day for the, the last time that Ohio State went there, uh, yeah, no, the, the, the scene around there is pretty good, and I think it probably also helped that there were a lot of Ohio State fans as well. That they brought a little bit of the uh, the atmosphere as well. But no, they they, they it, it, we had we had a really good time and a really good turnout for our show. Uh, the, the the one time we went to, uh, to Evanston as well, so that, that, that's not surprising. Now, you you of course have gone to Evanston. You've gone all over the place. You're going to uh, uh, Brookings this week, right, South Dakota. Yep. Uh, explain to me, if you can, uh, the process for game day's location selection. Uh, it's a, and the reason I'm asking this question, like you've told us before, there's a list of pro, uh, uh, not probabilities, but possibilities at the beginning of the season. Obviously, every season changes once we get into this part of the year. But when we heard on the podcast that you guys were having to rent houses for Penn State, Michigan, <laughs> we were we were surprised that like hotels weren't booked way ahead of time, especially for like a matchup like that. So how exactly, if you can give us any kind of details, because I'm just really curious about it. How, how does this work as you get later in the season? Yeah, I, I think in terms of it, with the housing stuff, with the hotel stuff, again, I can't speak to our entire operations and travel departments, but, but, but I do think that there are a lot of hotels that in terms of booking, uh, like with cancellation policies, and if we don't show up, 
Uh, we're not allowed to hold them. We have to pay for them. So I do think there's probably a, a budgetary consideration there that, that comes up with a, not being able to just like advance hold the hotel. That makes total sense business wise for the for the hotel itself if they have a bunch of fans traveling in that and that they wanna get a commitment as opposed to yeah, maybe college game day is gonna come, so we're gonna hold it free of charge for them. So that I mean, that's not conducive for them. But it, it can, yeah, but you're right. I I have talked about it as well. Like before the year starts, I'll uh, I'll put together a list of games that I think are probably like the most likely games in terms of being the biggest that week that we could likely be at and I mean, gosh, you would, I, if I would have put money on uh, a couple of weeks back, I, I would I would probably would have bet ridiculous amounts of money that we would have been in Columbus this week for, for, for Wisconsin and Ohio State. And I think what wound up happening was um, that Wisconsin's loss as a, as a massive favorite against Illinois kind of tempered the enthusiasm of, yeah, it's still like a top 15 matchup or whatever, but do we really think Wisconsin's going to go in there and, and win off of that effort. Now, I understand we don't necessarily always go to a game uh, because of like the perception of whether a, a game is going to be competitive or close or can the underdog win. But but I, I think it was a little bit of a buzzkill, the fact that uh, Wisconsin doesn't have that undefeated record uh, anymore. And, and obviously, I think if you look at LSU-Auburn, I think, again, I can't speak for the ultimate decision being made. I mean, I'm just talking about the games that I know we're in in the mix, I mean, LSU Auburn's obviously a, a massive game, but but I think if you look, I mean, we would show was just in Baton Rouge two weeks ago. Yeah. Odds are we're going to be in Tuscaloosa in two weeks. I mean, you really want to do three LSU games in five weeks? I, I think it's probably not good for the show to be constantly right around one team. And, and then if, if Michigan would have beaten Penn State, I think it's probably a really good chance uh, we we could have been in a, in, in State College if they were up in in Ann Arbor this week. So I, I think. It was kind of like a perfect storm, and then Saturday night, I'm just sitting there looking. Like, is there any is there any other place that we could have gone or, or could be considering that might be worthwhile? And I'm looking at the the FCS game, Division uh, two games, and Division three games, and just kind of going about. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm like North, I'm like North Dakota State on the road. I'm like, wow, they're actually playing the last team that beat them, uh, 27 or 28 game winning streak. It's a place we haven't been. Uh, they're number three in the country, so we, we got to kick the decision makers. Kick a lot of it around and say, you know what? Let's uh, let's pull the trigger. Let's go. Let's go there and do something different. It'll be a little. Not like I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people on Saturday morning that are expecting us to be uh, in Columbus, and, that, and that's fine. I mean, I'm sure there are probably some Ohio State people that are uh, disappointed, but I, I think uh, I, I just think going all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I think I think I think in watching the show, all it is, ultimately it's a big backdrop. But, but there's going to be plenty of Ohio State talk, plenty of LSU Auburn talk, oh, yeah. plenty of Notre Dame Michigan, plenty of LSU, plenty of CFP. Yeah, you, you, you're you're going to get a, the same show you would get uh, just do it at, at, at a cool little different location. That's it. so LSU Auburn, of course, is going to have SEC Nation uh, that'll that'll show up on campus. You brought up some very interesting stuff, and I, I'll go ahead and jump to this because you know we're based out of Memphis, and you know we're fired up about our football team and all of that. We're, you know, we this is a national show that we do, but but we're still Memphis boys. So any chance that we can get to talk, <laughs> I'm about so this mad stuff. at myself last week. By the way, I, I'm so angry. Hey, I, we were all I, over I could see that. Re- I could see. I, I could see that result coming, and I hate when I. Or when I when I hop on a side like just like with Wisconsin Michigan State a couple of weeks back, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I kind of like Michigan State plus the points, but I could see this being 23 to three, and you still take Michigan State. Like last week, I really think Tulane is good. God, but Memphis is going to be pissed off after the way they lost the Temple game. They got blown out last year by Tulane, but I'm still going to jump in and take Tulane plus the points anyway. Oh yeah, we we were we were in the same boat, Bear. We we all kind of gave up <laughs> on our Tigers after one loss. Just typical terrible fans that we are, and uh, we were all jumping on the Tulane bandwagon as well. That's uh that's the so so to get into this, all the stuff that you just talked about. You mentioned you know you don't want to go see the same team too many times. <laughs> you you like going to places that you haven't been. You know we're we're just gonna toss it out there. You got SMU Memphis. Next week, yeah, uh, it, it, it's in the mix. It's in the mix. How uh, it, it, is it a real possible? Like, go ahead and kill the dreams if 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 you're gonna kill them. No, I'm, no, I'm, I, I, there, 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 there's no there's no killing of, of any dreams. No, it, 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 it's a possibility. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you guys see have the same access to the schedule I have. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I think there's a I think there's a really good chance that the game is is, is going to wind up being uh, 
uh, the ABC primetime game. I, I don't know who the ultimate call is going to be and what's going to go into that, but I think in terms of the, the, the schedule and the possibilities of the matchup, I think if you have a uh, an undefeated SMU team, a, a team that um, hosting them, that, that's a pretty exciting team in itself. And, and we, it could we end had up being in the top twenty-five next week. Correct, correct. Yeah. We, we we had the we had a Cincinnati UCF game in prime time last year from the American, so it's certainly not unprecedented. I, I think there's probably a, a a good chance that game will wind up uh, with, with Chris and Kirk on the call. And and, and look, you got Oregon USC as a possibility. You got the cocktail party as a possibility. Uh, your, your game's a possibility. So we'll just have to see how the. Uh, uh, how, the, how the chips fall and, and, and where we lie after Saturday night, but no, it, it, it isn't like some unrealistic possibility that we could wind up there next week. That's uh, we are. It's super excited about the possibility. Now, obviously, both teams got to go out and win this week, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's the perfect setup in Memphis. Like it's, they've got Tiger Lane, this gigantic. Um, I, have you ever been to the Liberty Bowl Stadium? I have not. It's it is, it's old. It's the last place the Bear Bryant coached. It's, you know, there's a lot of really cool stuff about it. The sight lines are great, but it, it is definitely old. But they have spruced this thing up, and they've got this gigantic tailgating area now. It It's fascinating. So I I would love to be able to see uh, how it would all set up because they, they've set it up perfect for this kind of thing. They've got space. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> they've definitely got that. So let's talk about some sports betting stuff. You... Started out miserably, the same way that that I did this season, and then you caught fire. Now, last week we're just gonna wipe that one off. Is what it is. Um, exactly. I am having trouble catching teams in the right spots. How did you get off the schneid and and hit such a streak? That do you change anything when when a season starts off as poorly as uh, as it did? How do you change the way that you're looking at games, or do you? I really didn't. I, I just continued looking at the same types of uh, numbers and, and, and stats and situations and, and spots that, that I that I that I've always looked at. I think using that, you don't want to don't want to be like the BCS. I remember the BCS used to change every year and overlay up the oh well, we, the quality of the win component didn't work this year. Let's, let's get rid of that. Let's have a oh well, that didn't work. I think if you change something, just opening yourself up to uh, following up a bad run. But I think if you stay with what you're used to doing and looking at some efficiency numbers, uh, trusting your power ratings, uh, looking looking at certain spots in the schedule for certain teams, I, I think if you stay through to what what's gotten you so far in the last two years, I think that's ultimately what happened. I didn't know. I didn't know react. I knew. And hopefully it's going to come back. To I didn't expect a, a ridiculous run like I had in the comp going twelve and zero <laughs> over a three week stretch, but I, I'll take it. But yeah, and then this weekend, yeah, if I could have a, if I could trade like one bad week for three good ones the rest of the way, I mean, sign me up for that for for, for, the, for the next two months of the year. That's for sure. But no, yeah, I think that it just the key for for any sports. But I mean, people don't know who you guys know. You go through. Everyone's going to go through a a ridiculously bad stretch, and hopefully over the course of the uh, the, the marathon of the season or the year, it's all, it's all going to come out in the wash. and we're going to uh, be pretty close to even and come out a little bit ahead. That's, we're, uh, we're moving into, what is it, week nine now? So I've gone through eight weeks, and I've got two winning weeks in eight weeks. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not doing great, so I do have to, uh, you I know, do have to work. You know, I, I will say this, though. I, I, I don't know if you're necessarily alone there. Like I, I've had a, 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 I, I've had a, a, numerous conversations with uh, a couple of different uh, buddies of mine and people I respect, and like they they were they found it harder and harder to find uh, an edge with, with, with their numbers in terms of uh, especially where, where where it goes and where it closes. Like they haven't found very much uh, value at all this year, and, and I think the, the, the whole key with another with one of my buddies is just trying to. He's really, really just trying to beat the opening number, and uh, and sometimes that works. Sometimes it does. Like one, one of the games this week, I'm going to be curious to see uh, where it winds up and, and how the game goes. Is the uh, the TCU Texas game? I, I think there were a ton of people that were surprised when uh, when TCU opened up favorites, now flipped uh, to Texas being favorites. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if that move across zero uh, works out for the book or works out for the better. Now, so let, let's talk about some of the stuff this week. Um, Wisconsin, Ohio State, 
is sitting at 14 and a half. I think it opened at, what, 14, I guess? And I assumed that this line was going to open at probably 13 if Wisconsin had beaten Illinois. And then I thought I was going to get crazy value with Ohio State, you know, 16, 17, somewhere around there. And I could just take the Badgers and go that way. Uh, do you feel like, it, looking at the stats for Wisconsin, like, they still, I mean, time of possession, they were up. The only thing that cost them that game really was turnovers and not being mm-hmm. aggressive enough. Uh, you think the Badgers got a chance this weekend? I don't think they can win the game, but uh, look, I'm not looking to, to get in front of the uh, the Ohio State cover train. I sit in front of that LSU train last week. That didn't work out too well. But 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 you're right. I think there is going to be a little bit of an overreaction. Your number was, was pretty much spot on. I remember having that. Uh, during the show last week, I was I was texting Matt Lindeman out at Circa, and he said, because we were talking about the potential for the Ohio State Wisconsin game this week, and he said, yeah, probably around Ohio State around twelve or thirteen or so, and and that was right. And I think probably if, if you like Wisconsin or you want to wait it out, uh, this could be a situation where there is a little bit of an overreaction, and maybe uh, the, the number comes up some more. But uh, I know people probably have that Big Ten championship game. Uh, in, in mind, uh, the Ohio State won the title, but uh, a couple of years back, this was a close game in the Big Ten championship game with another really good Ohio State team. So, I, I, again, I'm not looking to hop in front of Ohio State, but if I had to play this game, I, I, if you can get a 14 and a half out there, or maybe you want to wait it out to see if it goes to 15, uh, you could do that. But I, I, if I had to bet, if I had to play the game, uh, I, I'd look at maybe taking Wisconsin plus the 14 and a half. Now you you actually saw Ohio State when when they played against Nebraska, and that was the same kind of deal that we sat and watched in person on Friday night against Northwestern. I I was not super impressed. I want to apologize. Uh, <laughs> there's, been, there's been a little bit of sawing that's going on in my uh, <laughs> my, my development right now. It, it, it appears it, it appears they they chose the absolute perfect time to. Uh, begin sawing and, and cutting out and there redoing the entire side siding on my deck. So uh, I, I'm going to try to go to a quiet room here as far away as possible. <laughs> no but, but we'll see if we can deal. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, so so I was not overly impressed. I didn't feel like Ohio State was uh, just overwhelming. Like I, I think their speed and their talent is, but as far as being dominant in the trenches and everything, I think that they can be had there. And, and Chris, he, like, Giannini, you tell me if I'm wrong here. Like, when we were watching that game, I didn't feel like this was a dominant line. Like, am I- So let me, let me tell you what, what I saw in the game, Bear. I, we watched this game, <clears throat> great seats, great tight lines, and Northwestern's offensive line consistently opened up massive, massive holes. And they were able to break off eight, nine-yard runs, but they're only eight or nine-yard runs because they don't have speed on the offense. I just think, man, if this is Wisconsin's offensive line, which is substantially better than Northwestern's, I mean, they're not even playing the same sport. And and then you've got the running back speed of Wisconsin. I, those are touchdowns. I mean, they just, they're just six, and nobody's catching those guys, even though Ohio State has a ton of speed. I felt like they got moved around a lot. If Wisconsin has a chance to win this game, all I could kept saying was is they're going to hold the ball, they're going to run the ball, and, and the problem is is are they going to score too quickly with some of these runs busting wide open? Yeah, I can't remember. I think there was one run I remember specifically in the first half with Bowser where I think he kind of slipped and went down. I know uh, he, he had a lot of room. I, I think where Ohio State obviously is, is just so, so much better. This talent, this pure raw talent oh, yeah. and speed, I, I think that's where they're where they're gonna like that secondary is ridiculously good. Chase Young is unblockable. Uh, they're the receivers this year are so much better uh, than than what they've had depth wise, especially with. And I shouldn't actually that's not that's not fair. I think Justin Fields is probably a, a better thrower uh, than what JT Barrett had. I'm trying to think back to those those barriers because they had good receivers, especially when they when they won the national title on 14, but I just don't know if the uh, Barrett was necessarily the best quarterback for them uh, moving forward in, in 15 and 16. And so, 
But um, but, but yeah, it, it, I think I think athletically is where they where, where they come in. But I, I could see that happen, and I think uh, that that's why they had so much trouble uh, in the playoff against Clemson when they played them. And I mean, they, they, the Clemson defensive line just completely dominated up them up front and and, and blew and blew that game open. So I. I Moving forward, are they going to face a team like that that could really expose them? Uh, the defensive line against the offensive line and the flip and really blow up that offense? We'll, we'll see. I mean, I don't know if, if Michigan's going to be able to do that or uh, or this week if Wisconsin on the flip side of their, their defensive line is going to be able to blow up their offense. So if they can, if they wind up facing a team that is, is really good up front and can just disrupt that timing and and make fields a little, a little shake, a little rattle, I certainly think their offense could uh, – uh, be, be disrupted a little bit, but I don't know if that's ultimately going to happen this week, but we'll see. I mean, you know, you guys bring up a good point about w- w- the, the Wisconsin offensive line uh, controlling a little bit of line of scrimmage and maybe turning some clock, and if they can help, if that helps keep Ohio State's offense off the field, uh, that's uh, the, the, the more the better. Yeah, you got that right. The, the, uh, the, the philosophy that I've heard a couple of times and, and a couple of different people say this year, mostly in talking about NFL, but the philosophy is the exact same. The best way to play defense is to not play defense. That that's just yep. it. Because there are no great defenses out right now anymore. In in college football, LSU, Bama, Clemson, they're not like the juggernauts they used to be. No, Clemson statistically, if you look at their defense, uh, statistically, I I think they're better uh, than what they've had in recent years. But still, at the same time, while they have been great so far, like we knew. Claylon Farrell and Christian Wilkins and, and, and Bryant and, and Dexter we, we, Dexter Lawrence. We knew those guys could beat Alabama, could beat Ohio State, could beat Oklahoma. We don't know that this group right now can go to a playoff and beat Alabama or LSU or anything. No, I, I think I think they can. I think their linebackers and their secondary are, are better than they, anything they've had uh, in, in recent years. So we'll, we'll we'll see if these uh these young new linemen are up to the task uh, if and when they do wind up reaching the uh, the playoff. All right, I, I, can I can I have a question here? Uh, and I don't want to keep you too long, Bear, but um, I, I do want to ask you about Clemson specifically. They are the defending champs. If we find that there's not a single ranked opponent when they finish this season at all left on their schedule, and you've got a one-loss Bama team or a one-loss LSU team to only one another, and an undefeated Ohio State and an undefeated you know, uh, uh, Oklahoma team. One of those teams is getting left home to let Clemson in, and is it strictly because what they did last year and what they've accomplished over the last four years? Because it can't be because of what they've done this year, right? It's the zero in the loss column, and, and that's whether whether, whether you want to whether you agree with that or disagree with that. That's ultimately <clears throat> how the college football playoff selection committee is operated. Uh, they they have chosen the zero over the one loss when it comes to uh, the, the the power five teams, and they've chosen one loss over two loss in, in certain situations where Penn State could have gotten in or Georgia could have gotten in last year. And, and this is a situation where you, if you look at Clemson, it's hard to fault them though. You, they, they've got two SEC non conference games. I mean, they played A and M, and they got to go to South Carolina at the end of the year. So it's not like they're not scheduling anybody. And a and is probably going to want, and a and probably going to wind up being eight and four at the end of the year, and, and seven and five in that area. And yeah, that doesn't look like a great record, but at the same time, I mean, well, who, do, who does Oklahoma play? UCLA, who uh, might might be the worst team in the Pac-12, or certainly one of the couple of worst. I mean, well, well what's Oklahoma's best non-conference win? And I, I, I mean, yeah, they, I think Baylor and Texas, maybe there's some of those teams in conference are better than what Clemson has played in the ACC, but. It, 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 this is, I'll, I'll tell you what's, what's going to be interesting. You know, we didn't have it even brought their team up. If Clemson's undefeated, they're in. And whoever the, the loser of Alabama LSU is going to be the team that's left out. Now, do I think that uh, the, the, uh, the Alabama LSU loser could be better than one of, the, of, well, better than one of those other teams? Yes, but unfortunately, the, the selection committee kind of uses the whole rudimentary well, zero losses is better than one. So, and, and you think about it. It's something that I've talked about before as well. Like people, well, oh, we need a committee. We need a committee. Well, we we need to change this. Well, what you're getting is an era where we have, you and I and, and have all these numbers and 
metrics and so many different things are out there, power ratings, and so many smart numbers that are better than one loss records. And the committee doesn't use those or recognize those. And what they have are old school coaches, old school thinking that if you win the game, that's good. And a win is a better than a loss. And 13 and 0 is better than, than, than 12 and 1. And until the committee gets a little younger, a little fresher, and starts incorporating some of these things, uh, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get college coaches who have been drilled for the 60 years that they've been involved in the game that uh, will just win the game. And, and the best example of what the hypothetical that I'm curious to see what will wind up happening this year is if Oregon runs out and wins out, it's 12 and 1, and their only loss is that touch, is that, is that late loss to Auburn and Dallas at the beginning of the year, where I think a lot of people felt that, that Oregon was the better team that night. If Oregon somehow was in this situation where they're a one loss team and there's another one loss team that gets it ahead of them, what, what message does that say to, to an AD? Don't play, don't play Auburn in the non-conference. Play, oh, yeah. play Weber State, play Montana, play uh, uh, North Carolina A&T, whomever, uh, Wofford. Play, play one of those teams because the ultimate goal is win all of your games. Like I, I think when the, the negative of the loss outweighs the benefit of the win, it's, it's not worth it. And, and I think Rob Lyle said that early, early on, like I mean, the goals to, goals to win them all, and they want the easiest path to being undefeated at Baylor, and it, it came back and bit them when they didn't go undefeated and run the table in the, in, in the Big 12. But uh, in, until the committee rewards a team for playing a difficult non-conference game and loses a close game, like, like tw- a 12-1 and Oregon, would be could could potentially be better than a lot of thirteen and zero teams out there. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. I'm, I know I'm getting way ahead of the game, but that's <laughs> going to be something to uh to pay attention to as we get to get closer to uh the end of the season. If Oregon can survive SC in a couple of weeks, if they can you know, be be whoever it is SC again or Utah in the in the Pac-12 championship game. That's uh, last year. I was convinced that they were going to put Ohio State in over Oklahoma just because of TV ratings. Like, I, that's what I, I had sworn it had come down to because the first few years, it was whichever team had the highest TV ratings throughout the season that ended up getting the last playoff. <laughs> and I, I thought, okay, this is, it, you know, and I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, a little bit. But I, I could have sworn that, and then they, they went against it and put Oklahoma in, and, you know, I think it was the right decision. But this year, it, they, they've got a, a safety net. Right, this committee has got this safety net of yep. quote unquote eye test. So you can throw out everything else if you want to, and just put, ah, well, they look like the better team. And I just, you, you're right with all the metrics. I actually uh, tweeted something earlier that was uh, what the BCS standings would look like right now. And the BCS standings right now would be Ohio State one, uh, LSU two, Alabama three, Clemson four. And then you got Oklahoma and Penn State at five and six. And people were like, you know, why would you want to use that? And da, da, da. And I look back at it. The BCS formula was perfect for we just what need we're to add two right more now. games. Yeah. Two more teams. <laughs> like, that's all it was. It, it was perfect. You had to blow it up. We had to reinvent the wheel, knock the house down. You just add a room. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what the interesting thing is going to be. I mean, I'm going to see it's going to be in a couple of weeks. If LSU wins this week, LSU's going to be number one when the first playoff rankings come out. I can guarantee oh, yes. that. Because the committee will, will look at resume, look at the quality wins that they have. LSU will be number one in the, in the CFP rankings uh, if they wind up beating Auburn this week. And then they'll have that, that bullseye when they go to Tuscaloosa in a couple of weeks. So, But yeah, yeah, what was so weird about what the committee did last year is that they contradicted themselves. Like, like they put Oklahoma 4... But then you put Georgia five and Ohio State six. Like you're saying, Oklahoma's win and winning the Big Twelve was what separated was them impressive. from Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> but Ohio State winning the Big Ten wasn't more impressive than what Georgia did. So that, the, 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 I, I think what that told me was that they wanted to put Georgia in, but they couldn't justify it. And they were like, like, who do we want to put in? Ohio State or Oklahoma? Who do we think is better? And they landed on Oklahoma. So probably just because of the nature of how Ohio State lost that game to Purdue. And if you look back, I don't want to harp on last year because it's, so, <laughs> it's done over. Look at Ohio State during the course of the year last year. They were not an overly impressive team for a majority of the state. They could have lost to Maryland. 
Uh, the Michigan State game was ugly. Uh, Nebraska led them, I think, in the third quarter. Uh, there were a lot of ugly performance. Minnesota, they tri- like they were not a good, dominant type playoff team for for most of the year. It, it took them being an underdog on their home field against Michigan, a team that they've dominated for the last ten years, to, to get them to play their best game of the year. And then they beat a completely overmatched Northwestern team that, oh, by the way, it was a one possession game in the fourth quarter in the Big Ten Championship last year that, to, to get them to final. But I think if you're taking the entire body of, the, uh, of work last year, they, they, I think the committee definitely made the right call to put Oklahoma in. That's, oh, absolutely. And this year, I mean, what, what you were just describing, you know, it, it, Clemson is not to that level yet. But it, this Clemson team reminds me of, of the 20, what is it, 14 Florida State team? I mean, it was just where where they could sleepwalk through the the schedule, and it's the the same thing, you know. It's Clemson doesn't have to get ready for anything until the playoff, you know. But so long as they're oh. undefeated, they'll be fine. They'll get in, and then they'll get to go prove it and, and do what they do. Um, that, that, that that game in Columbia at the end of the year could be could be interesting because he, he, South Carolina did go down and they didn't play great against Athens to the win, but uh, Georgia turned the ball over and, and they walked out with a win. Uh, officials certainly didn't help them out at Williams Bryce this week against Florida. Uh, there's there's going to be a lot on the line. I, I could see, uh, I, I could see South Carolina giving Clemson a uh, right now at least giving them a game uh, at, at the end of the year. That'll be, re- be really interesting, and, may, and maybe that will be maybe that uh, sense of a threat uh, will we'll finally get Clemson to. Uh, to play their best game of the year, so I'm curious to see how that that shakes down as the year goes on. That's I, I think Helensky will be you know healthy by then. Uh, I think yeah, 100 percent. Like that could that could make South Carolina's entire year. That could make their decade. Good gracious! All right, we've kept you for 30 minutes. I told you I'd uh, I'd wrap it up by 30 minutes. <laughs> so uh, we'll get out of here. I do want to get you back on again, obviously. Yeah. Um, because hey, if you guys end up here in Memphis, we got to go get some ribs. We got to go get some chicken totally. wings. We got you know all that. Totally. Things. So absolutely, I look forward. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that will be the case. If we, we I, 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 I never like root for like a certain result or spring or things or not, but I, I, I've said it multiple times, and it's certainly not a lie. I, I enjoy when game day gets to new places and, and anywhere we go for the first time is something that I root for. So uh, hopefully things will work out, and the show will indeed be in uh, in Memphis next week. And if not, I, I certainly think there's a really good chance that. Uh, I'll at least make it in for that ABC primetime game after wherever game day might be. So, so last question. I've already said last question, but it, it, if <laughs> if you guys only do the ABC thing here and game day ends up somewhere else, mm-hmm. how long are you in town for that? Uh, we Kirk, Kirk, and Maria and my, myself will will fly in right after game day. So, depending on where we are, we usually get there early in the afternoon, and uh, we'll we'll be there for the for the game, and then uh, I'm sure Kirk will head home right after the game. I'll probably take a quick little flight back back over to Nashville and I'll, and I'll uh, sleep, stay the night in Memphis and fly back out to Connecticut on uh, on Sunday morning. Okay, okay. So I was I was very curious. If it's a primetime game, then then you might actually have time to like grab a late dinner. So we, we might have to make that happen. We'll see what happens. Potentially. We'll see. <laughs> All right, that works again. He is Chris Felica from ESPN College Game Day and the Sanford Stephen the Bear podcast. Find him on Twitter at Chris Felica. Uh, buddy, we appreciate you for uh, for hopping in here. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Absolutely. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.